Trauma occurs when people experience violence and harm that is outside the realm of normal human experience. While we grieve our losses whenever we lose a loved one, it is typically not traumatic unless it happens in an unusual or particularly sudden, violent, cruel, or unjust way. We have all been traumatized by the events at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, and by the prospect that America is once again going to war. More shocking events may lie ahead. Trauma such as this can create a confusion of feelings, including fear, anger, sadness, and a sense of helplessness or hopelessness. Fortunately, America's early response has been outstanding as people have sacrificed and volunteered generously in the aftermath of the destruction and loss of life. We may be surprised to find that our feelings about this trauma are not fading, but continuing to grow, and that those feelings may be confused and in conflict. Rest assured that this is normal and necessary for who, witnessing such an attack on the innocent, would not feel fear, anger, sorrow, and compassion. It's perfectly normal for our feelings to rapidly cycle from rage to grief and back again, with intervals of fear interspersed. However, this back and forth cycling of feelings may interfere with our abilities to think clearly and may even cause us to act impulsively in ways contrary to our highest, most important values. Our anger and rage need special attention. Our rage calls out for punishment and justice, and yet this may take time to achieve. If you are usually opposed to violence, you may find it especially disturbing to experience feelings of rage and hatred now. What can you do with these feelings? Hopefully, you will not take your negative feelings out on your friends, co-workers, and family members. Psychologically, there is also a risk of taking these feelings out on yourself by feeling guilty for not being harmed, for surviving without any physical injuries, and by identifying with those who did have deeply painful losses. In addition to anger, you may experience profound fear and or grief for the tragic losses that have occurred. What can you do to help yourself cope with these feelings and the stress they produce? First of all, watch out for any increased irritability, impulsiveness, or an increase in drinking, smoking, or other self-harming behaviors. They are not going to help you cope better in the long run. Second, recognize that this stress has a profound effect on your body as well as your mind. Perhaps you have been having difficulty sleeping, or you've noticed a major change in your eating habits. These can also affect your health. So be sure to get enough rest and to maintain your nutritional needs. Many people under stress become dehydrated, so it's important to keep drinking lots of fluids too. Third, find a way to help your body relax and release uncomfortable emotions it doesn't know how to handle. The next track will teach you a simple guided imagery method for relaxing yourself despite the concerns of the day. It will also help you to identify, honor, and come to better terms with your feelings. Listen to it at least once daily, and also encourage members of your families and co-workers to listen if you think it would be of help to them. While guided imagery isn't a complete solution to the issues we face together now, it can help you relax, handle your stress, clarify your feelings and values, and act on the values you most cherish. This guided imagery program is brought to you by Healthy Roads, Healthy Roads is a subsidiary of American Specialty Health, a national health services organization for complementary health care. This program was authored by Dr. Martin Rossman and Dr. David Bressler, co-directors of the Academy for Guided Imagery. This guided imagery lesson begins by teaching you a simple way to relax your body and mind, and then invites you to imagine yourself in a safe place of beauty and comfort where you can come to peace with your feelings in a way that's personally right for you. Before continuing, make sure you aren't driving or engaged in any other activity 
that requires your full and complete attention. Make absolutely certain that it's safe for you to focus inside for the next few minutes. If not, stop listening now and continue only when it's safe to do so. If it is safe, take a comfortable position and give yourself 25 minutes or so to experience this guided imagery lesson. <laughs> 